a sense of futility, a sense of hopelessness and uh, boredom for your own life, deadness, aloneness. Mm -hmm. What kind of authority does the Bible hold for you? Well, I mean, if I say that Jesus is my ultimate authority, it's, it's the book about him. Without that book, we wouldn't know much about him. Uh, that is its ultimate authority for me, and it's its main authority. I think it is, if I want to know about Jesus as he was then, this is where I have to look. And, um, so that is its main authority for me, I think. I, I, I don't think of it as authoritative in the sense that the more conservative Christians, I think, do, where everything is to be taken in a literal sense, and if you don't do it that way, that uh, you will be lost when the great day comes. Mm -hmm. No, its authority is the authority of, of speaking an authentic early voice about who, who Christ was. Does that include any kind of moral guidelines, ethical guidelines? Well, yes, because, I mean, again, I, I relate it to, to Jesus because he, of course, sets down those moral guidelines, especially the, I mean, the, the commandment of love, um, which is the, as far as I'm concerned, the moral guideline. Um, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God and thy neighbor as thyself. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. Um, and that has a great deal to do, I mean, for me, with what a Christian life is all about, the core of it. Have there been times when you've sensed God's intervention in your life? Yes, there have. Uh, in some cases, it was only many years later that I sensed it at the time. I really didn't at all. I've written a couple of autobiographical books, where I, the first of which especially I try to answer for myself the question I'm often asked, how did you get to be a minister? How did you ever end up in this particular line of work? And um, I really thought to myself, indeed, how? Because I grew up in a, in a family and in a world that was so totally without any connection with religion or church that it is sort of interesting to see how it all began. As I look back in my life, from even the very early parts of it, I could see things that I had remembered all these years, though at the time I couldn't have told you why, that seemed to me very terribly significant. Decisions I made, mm -hmm. people who said something sometimes very casually to me out of the corner of their mouths that I sort of tucked away and that in some odd way became signposts along a road that at the time I didn't realize I was choosing, but that in fact I did choose. I can think of several examples of that. Um, I remember, for instance, after my first book was published in 1950, uh, when nobody could have been less interested in the church or religion in any organized sense than I, somebody came to speak at the school where I was teaching at the time and asked me to have lunch with the minister and said somewhere two-thirds of the way through lunch, have you ever thought of putting your talents as a writer to work for Christ. Well, if he'd said, have you ever considered, you know, becoming an astronaut or a, a deep sea diver, he couldn't have taken me more by surprise. And I simply put it down as an eccentricity. But it nonetheless, looking back on it, I think, you know, that was a word which I was spoken out of nowhere and which fell uh, into a bottomless well at the time. But by God, why have I remembered it all mm -hmm. these years? It somehow the seed was planted. Mm -hmm. And another example I can give is a. Uh, more recent than that and different, was sitting once in a parked car by the road in, uh, I live where I live in Vermont, at a dark time of my life, worried about all sorts of things, full of anxiety and fear uh, and so on about lots of things, and happening to look up through the windshield and seeing a car come speeding down Route 30, and it had one of those license plates you get by paying a little extra, and on that license plate, was the word trust. And it just struck me and continues to strike me that all the words in the world meant that the, what were most important for me to hear at that moment was that one word, trust, trust God, trust yourself, trust your children, trust life. Um, and you could, uh, you could easily accuse me for that reason of the rankest kind of superstition, how absurd. And yet it, I, I reject that rejection. Uh, and I simply look upon that as a moment when, without in any sense, um, interfering my freedom to be whatever I wanted to be, to say yes or no to God or anything else. Mm -hmm. God just gave me this glimpse uh, through the crack in the door, this mm -hmm. whisper from the wings. Um, Do you think much about death and your own dying? I don't think unduly. Um, I wrote a novel, uh, a second one back, about a medieval English saint named Godric 
And uh, it turned out, as I look back on it again, I didn't know it at the time, it's a book that has very much to do with death, I think. The Godric uh, is a, lived to be 105, and a lot of the book is, well, the book is written, is imagined as having been spoken by him in an old age. And uh, he's thinking a lot about death, his own approaching death. And uh, I think perhaps in that way, I was also, it was a way of, it was my own dream of death, my own thinking about it. And uh, towards the end of the book, Godric says, and I wrote the words, but in a funny way, I think when a novel is writing well, even though you write them in a way, they are also words spoken to you, the way a dream, though it's your own creation, is something, in a sense, over and against you. It comes at you from somewhere else. And Godric says at some point towards the end of it, thinking about death, he says, what's lost is nothing to what's found, and all the death that ever was set next to life would scarcely feel a, fill a cup. And uh, I draw great comfort from those words, even though they're my words, that what's lost is nothing to what's found. Indeed, death is to be taken seriously as the Christian faith does take it. There's no pretense that it doesn't happen, and much is lost, much is lost, but that if the great promises of the faith are true, what is lost is as nothing to what is found, and uh, in the long run, death doesn't amount to much when you put it next to life. Does the idea of life after death hold much meaning for you? Well, yes, it, indeed it does. I mean, I don't know what it means. I don't know what it's going to be like. Uh, but uh, I always think of Paul saying, if what is it? He says, if for this life only we have hope, then we are of all men most hopeless or something like that. And it seems to me everything that Jesus says, everything that is implied in him is that the story doesn't end with death, serious as it is and final as it is. Um, but the love of God survives it. The love of God for us survives it. And therefore, I assume in some sense the love of God in us also survives it, which includes the love of each other. So when I read the 21st chapter of Revelation about the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven adorned as a bride for her husband and no more crying, no more death, it's very real to me. Um, it's just what I glimpsed that day in New York. It was almost the new New York that for an instant had come down out of heaven and uh, were the only crying in the city were, were the tears of reunion for a moment people seeing each other as human beings, as friends, not as threateners of each other. You had to describe what it is that gives your life direction. What is it that you'd say? Well, I would say my faith is what gives it direction. And I, I think again of that uh, passage I talked about at the very beginning of our conversation from the Epistle of the Hebrews, where he speaks of faith as a journey towards, as involving that dimension of life in which we glimpse from afar something for which we are homesick and for which we long and towards which we move. Um, that is what gives my life uh, direction, gives it passion, gives it hope, gives it almost every good thing that it has in it, I suppose, would be my faith. It's very hard to imagine my life without that, or almost anybody's life, even people who would say they have no faith, something keeps them hoping and moving forward. Ferdinand Buechner, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. Interesting.